winch to load the boat on the trailer, always hook up the safety chain just in case the winch comes up. Steve has been fishing since he was a lad and what was once a family pastime has now turned into a driven passion on the national fishing tournament circuit. Bagging comps like the Mercury Gold Coast Brim Super Series, Steve is a force to be reckoned with. Let's see what it takes to be a true legend, what setup a pro angler needs on the water. Hi, my name's Steve Eldred and I've been tournament fishing for about seven years. I began fishing as a, a young kid with the family. We've always been uh, a fishing family, I suppose you'd say. Uh, from the age of about eight or nine, we spent many months of the year up on Fraser Island chasing reef fish, uh, towing for marlin. Tournament fishing for me, uh, it, it, it reinvigorated my like for fishing many years ago. Having a, a sport that you can go out and, and have a challenge, it's, it's nice to be able to go out, aim to catch a certain type of fish, no matter what the weather is, what the tide and what the moon is, and come back with a bag of fish. It really fulfills that um, angling desire. Over the seven years of tournament fishing, I've been lucky enough to win quite a few events in both uh, bass and brim. Uh, when you spend your life chasing two different species, it, it really takes some time out of your life, but it's something I've chosen to do, and luckily enough, the family supports me with that. Many times when we're at an event, we'll have kids and general public come up to us and say, what does it take to be a tournament angler? There's this big stigma out there that it's a elite sport and it's hard to get into. It, on the contrary, it's, it's open for everyone. All I can say is come along, talk to the people that do it. They're a great, friendly bunch of guys. They'll help you get involved. It's not that difficult. Back when I first started tournament fishing, I entered my first comp at uh, Gold Coast as what they call a non-boater. To enter a comp as a non-boater is purely a matter of turn up with a couple of fishing rods, a box of lures, and jump on a boat with some guy you don't even know. He takes you out, you have a great day fishing, and hopefully catch a few fish to bring back and weigh in. It's uh, easy for anyone to start that way. Probably the easiest way to get all the information you need for this sport is to go to fishingmonthly.com.au. There's various links there that will give you the events, the calendars, and all the rules and information you need to know. You'll notice on most tournament boats that we have these electric motors on the front. Uh, they're invaluable. They allow us to manoeuvre the boat along through shallow country, around structure, while keeping as quiet as we can. Uh, I'm lucky enough to have one of the new iPilots. It allows me to press a button no matter where I am, and it will actually anchor me there. No need for rope, no need for chains. Um, when you catch a fish, you can simply move off to where you need to be to get that fish back in. At the press of a button, the boat takes me straight back to where I've been sitting for the first part of the day. Uh, the trusty sounder, um, very valuable piece of equipment when fishing. Um, a lot of the time we're fishing deep water and we have no idea what's under us. So with the use of these devices, it's easier to target where the fish are, what side of a rock bar they're holding on and utilise our fishing time much more productively. Although they're big boats we run to do this tournament stuff, it's, it's nice to have a lot of spare space on the deck. That's why with the use of a decent rod locker, we can store up to 20 rods underground without having any on the deck that we need to walk on. There's probably enough room in this boat to store the average person's lure and tackle collection 10 times over. So when we go to an event, we don't have to spend hours trying to work out what lures we're going to take with us and what lures we need to leave behind. As well as having the sounder up the front, obviously we run a big sounder on the dash because that's where we spend most of our time driving around looking for where those fish are before we start fishing. GPS, um, it's a must have. When you find the fish out there in amongst the deep water, it's hard to tell exactly where you are. Simple press of a button, you can mark that spot and come straight back to where you started for your next drift. Probably my favourite part of this whole boat since the new rebuild would have to be the Esky. It's nice to go out, have a day's fishing and have some nice cold drinks and cool sandwiches for lunch. Probably one of the different things that this boat has to some of the other boats out there is what we call a hydraulic jack and plate. Uh, with the flick of one switch beside the steering wheel, we can make this motor lift up and down approximately six inches. Very valuable when you're traveling through shallow water, uh, just to keep that propeller clear of what's on the bottom. When you've gone through all the trouble to go out, find those fish and finally catch one, we've got these fish tanks down the back, we call them live wells. That's how we keep the fish alive all day because in this tournament game, you're not allowed to weigh a dead fish. These live wells will hold approximately 100 litres of water, so you can easily fit the 10 fish in there that you're going to have some days and keep them very healthy. 
In order to keep these fish alive, we do have numerous aeration systems and pump-in systems. Uh, this boat is equipped with a full flow right system, which makes our life very easy. With the flick of a switch on the dash, automated timers, once the fish are in there, we just flick the button and forget about them and we know they're fine for the rest of the day. To push this boat along at the speeds we do get up to out in the open water, we've got to have big motors. Uh, I run a 175 Optimax Pro XS. It's, um, it's been a big change. I've had other motors in the years, they've been slightly unreliable. But the Mercury, I've got a lot of trust in it and it is very good on fuel. Steve is taking us to the eastern banks off Ormiston, near Cleveland. The target species, brim. Just going to load up this uh, map so we can see where we're going. It's been a while since I've been here. Whether it's been a while or not, it's still good to refresh your knowledge of local green zones for the areas that you want to fish. All the government agencies, that, that they build a very good book which clearly outlines where you are and where you are not allowed to be. Um, if you're going to fish the bay especially, get hold of one of those books because there's many, many green zones out there and you don't want to get caught there. The fines are big, the green zones are there for a reason, so play by the rules and know where you're supposed to be. With a full moon the night before, and just before the turn of the tide, finding the right spot required a bit of experience and a bit of trial and error. The beauty of Steve's boat is that he has designed it for the conditions that he loves. And Steve loves a challenge. Snags, shallow water, feisty fish, he's a man on the hunt. When we talk about crankbaits, we're referring to a little hard body lure with a bib on the front. Uh, this one's an atomic hard, readily available from all good tackle shops. Uh, great value for money. You can pull these straight out of the box, go and throw them anywhere around the bay and numerous other places in shallow water, and they'll catch all sorts of fish from flathead to brim, uh, tailor, and a lot of other things. Once that tide had turned, the fish had come out to play. Might just put that fella on the stick and we'll see how big he is. Yeah, healthy little 27 and a half centimetre to the fork. See how we measure him. You know some people measure a fish, they'd call that a 31. In our talk, we measure it from that point there, so it's 27 and a half. So we'll put him in the live well. Normally we'll dive down and catch fish now just to make us feel even more incompetent. back to his favourite tree. It didn't take Steve long to hook up again. Things. Ooh, that's a fish. Come on in it again. Yeah, I'm on. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Yes, I am. I reckon this guy's going to be a little bit bigger. It's small. Almost like an identical pair of fish. And that's an average little bay fish. Put him in the bin and uh, give old mate we caught before someone to talk to and compare stories. Well, it just proves that with a bit of thought when putting together the serious angler's tinny, from the storage to the electric motor, right the way to the hydraulic jacking plate on your outboard for that competitive edge, you can have the rigour of a professional and enjoy a day out fishing in the bay just as intense as a day in the comps. For more information on fishing competitively, head over to www.fishingmonthly.com.au and for more information on today's fishing, head to the Boat Show's Facebook page and ask our experts online. 
Oh, well, hopefully you've got a bit of an insight into how us tournament fishermen go out and do it. It's, uh, it's not that hard. Grab a rod, grab some lures and come and give it a go. Thanks to Steve for showing us a few handy tips and tricks. Right now, let's go and catch up with the boys from the Brisbane Boat Show to see what highlights we have this week. This is our new Honda BF250, our silver bullet. Honda have finally produced a motor that's actually bigger than me. Um, our previous motor, our biggest motor is our Honda 225 here, but now we've got the new 250. It's got blast technology, it's 3.6 litre V6, and it's got plenty of punch. Uh, it's actually only been out since last November, so it's only new to the market. We've um, sold a fair few of these motors in Australia and we're getting a fair few of them now out on the water. Mainly fishing boats, larger fishing boats, um, also rigid inflatables, and a lot of commercial applications. And you'll pick up one of these 250s for around about the $30,000. We want to know what colour a vessel's stern light needs to be. Find out after the break. More Boat Show after these messages.